Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture the synergy. Today we will cover lecture number 4 that is loads on structure which is very important uh, topic in this course and we will try to understand in a very simplistic manner. Now if you see the definition of load, again I am just uh, you know um, taking the snapshot from the Google search, the first time you just search about the load, so it says about some definition. So, here the pertinent definition which can be helpful in the context of our course that is the structural load. So, what is load? So, if you see here a weight or source of pressure drawn by someone or something, okay? make it very specific to the structural load. What it says structural loads or action are the forces deformations or accelerations applied to a structure which will make a result in uh, um, you know say stresses, then deformation, displacement of object etcetera. So, that is overall idea about the load what we see, but this particular lecture will talk about the load applied on a structures in reference to building specially and sometimes also will discuss uh, not only the building, some of other structural element, other architectural components. So, let us move on. So, in this particular slide, we will again uh, you know make it little bit clear about the loads. Loads on structure is essential for its design. Why all of a sudden we should know about different kind of loads and their property and how they act uh, to a structure, because it will help us to design the structural element. The structural design requires all this calculation of different kind of loads that may act on a building. The load may be static, static means it will not change over time. The other one may be dynamic. So, static weight uh, uh, like static load it includes the self weight of the structure. Suppose a building is made with the concrete, brick, steel. So, it will stand like this, so that is static. Then the furniture or sometimes like that which will not really change its you know load on structure uh, over time. The other one is uh, the dynamic which subject to change with respect to time. Say for example, the earthquake, we all know the earthquake it is a cer certain jerk okay, which will be random in nature and it will have different frequency the moment it start and then uh, slow down and then there will be some you know after shock. So, we will discuss that uh, in uh, upcoming slides. So, this is dynamic in nature. Again if you discuss uh, if you say the example of wind. So, we know that it will not have a constant wind load that is acting on a building that is uh, you know imposing on a building. So, it will have different velocity uh, over time and so as true with the rain based on its intensity and all. Again load can be classified under the man made load, suppose we make equipments like uh, you know in our classroom or so we have uh, benches, uh, then we have other furnitures as well which will put load on the structure and it may be natural. Natural means as already mentioned it may be a, of some disaster or, uh, like earthquake or the flood situation or it may be wind load or so load. But one thing we should understand like something like earthquake, flood, these are not very much you know sure that each day it is occurring. So, it is a random uh, event which may occur any time. So, what we normally do we cannot actually calculate the load in that precision or actual load is unpredictable, but what we do is based on the probability that it may occur. So, designing a building when we design the structure of the building we should take account all possible load that may affect the building design that may deform the building. So, in order to make your building resistant uh, to all applied load on it anything starting from the self load to the additional you know your furniture load or maybe some natural load wind, uh, rain or maybe earthquake, flood. 
So, we should calculate that. So, in structural calculation there are different you know handbooks uh, from which different you know um, input parameter will be taken into consideration. Now, before we really discuss each of that load in detail to uh, get better idea, let us focus on this image. This is a uh, work by a student, a group of student. Uh, so, basically this is a, a cartoon type image, but it says a lot where uh, it shows different kind of load. So, starting from the sun, so we all know that okay, it uh, produces heat and that definitely cause a uh, different you know change in the property like uh, depending on the material. So, it will have uh, you know impact by the thermal heat and with heat it may expand or sometimes uh, in you know winter season, uh, season it may you know squeeze down. So, that is creating some thermal load and it is uh, also very important and that is why you know in the building when a building is uh, you know too lengthy or something sometimes we have to uh, like we need to give the expansion gap to allow that expansion. Even that is so true even our school days uh, we studied that why there is uh, you know some expansion joint given in the railway track. So, this is railway track made of metal and when uh, you know uh, train just cross then it uh, generates some of uh, you know heat. So, it may expand. So, for that we provide this gap so that it can um, not really bend or uh, there will be some damage in the line. Now, move on to the other one not pertinent to uh, the you know in the urban area or maybe the area where there is no uh, such uh, snowfall or something, but in some part of the world or even in India some area where we have to take care of this because that is additional one, but again it is not very uh, you know permanent. Okay. Permanent means in a particular season will get this, this additional load it will accumulate on the uh, roof and it creates additional load to that. So, as to with the rain, if there is no proper drainage or maybe the slope is too narrow or almost flat and there is some problem, so water will accumulate and that will create some additional load to it and sometimes it may be very much dangerous to a building. I will show you some photographs on that account too. Now, come to the wind, we know that is the lateral force uh, you know acting on a building on a surface and then uh, we just uh, get two important load, one is your dead load and another is live load. So, if you get the clue from the word dead means already it is not movable, immovable and what is live load? which is movable, which will change. Say for example, the uh, you know uh, in this particular uh, room where I stand like the beam columns that were constructed at the beginning and it remains stand. So, it will not move tomorrow. So, this is basically dead load. So, all building like components like this your beam or column, walls, roof, different materials structural material uh, you know parts they are adding to the dead load of the building. Now, what is live load which is movable? Say for example, uh, myself like now I am standing in a position in the room. So, I add load to it, but the moment I just go out from the room. So, that load will be released. So, I am live load. So, as true with the furnitures because they are movable. Today, I like this particular furniture in that manner but tomorrow I will change it, I just shift it, so as to with the machinery. So, these are some live load and here you can see that person uh, here, here or maybe the furnitures they are basically live load and dead loads are these beam columns. Apart from that due to earthquake there will be some you know wave, there will be some motion. Uh, on the you know underground and for that the building got affected 
with this oscillation. So, that is due to the seismic uh, activity or the earthquake. So, that is also referred to earthquake load. And not only uh, for earthquake, sometimes even if your building is situated in uh, some area where the water table like ground water table is high, ground water table is uh, the level of the ground water like we can easily get it. So, uh, nearly like this is the plain near the river or something where we normally observe the ground water table is high. So, this uh, underground water that may also affect. So, that is uh, your uh, sometimes call is uh, you know hydraulic pressure uh, from uh, below the structure. Now, before we uh, go further let us just say uh, we in structure we normally say that uh, one is your foundation and underground structure and then which is above that is basically the superstructure. So, many a time I will use this superstructure. So, I just uh, give it. Apart from that uh, also here it is shown if you see it clearly that something dotted some deformation. So, this is the initial foundation level and here it just uh, went down because of unequal settlement of the land and sometimes it may happen due to the compactness of the soil, compactness of the, that particular area. So, it may have unequal settlement and for that it will also create some load to the building and sometimes it may also uh, you know collapse the building. Then uh, here if you see that person is drilling something and here is uh, that uh, particular drummer doing something. So, it creates something you know some vibration. So, it is also vibration load and when it actually propagate ok. So, that will create resonance. Now, suppose with this particular uh, frequency if all structures are uh, acting like that. So, it will further propagate and create a resonance and sometimes it may uh, you know affect the building. So, that is why uh, sometimes we have to uh, look into that uh, you know point and design our structure accordingly. Now, uh, what is left uh, here in this picture? So, uh, you can see a car uh, just uh, uh, this car hit that particular portion of the building ok and it is all of a sudden load. So, this is referred to impact load and it is uh, I can give you another example and I also will show the photograph. Suppose, all of a sudden we start uh, start hammering the wall or we just try to nail the wall. So, that time it is impact load all of a sudden load given to that. So, this is overall what we are going to learn from this particular lecture. So, I just uh, give uh, I gave the brief about all this through this picture. So, let us move on. Now, types of load there are different way of classifying uh, loads. So, uh, these are very common uh, classification. So, one is dead load and live load already I mentioned about it and we will also uh, get it more clear with the example. Then it may be static load, it may be dynamic load it may be point load, it may be distributed load, it may be uniform load and it uh, also impact load. So, what exactly these are? Let us clear that. So, here are these are tentative uh, diagrams and which I have taken from a book structure in architecture. Uh, so, here uh, uh, like picture 1 to 10 they are depicting different kind of loads that uh, in the previous slide we had. In this case uh, if you see that uh, this is showing all the structural component the column, wall, beam, roof, truss etcetera. So, they are actually immovable they will be same over the time when it was constructed and now it will be almost same. So, that is why it is called dead load. So, this one is your dead load ok. Is it clear? Uh, now, move to the other one it is the same type of building, but in this if you see that uh, the building outline is uh, very faint and uh, there are some object like uh, person is uh, lifting weight, then there is image that is a cupboard, then car is parked, rack and something here uh, 
uh, basically it referred to the snow. So, these are actually movable. Suppose with increase in temperature, this will be melted and then it will uh, go back to the original shape. So, this is again a movable one. So, it can come under live load. The car again it is not permanent. So, when you go out with your car that place will uh, be free of that load of the car. So, again it is live load. Then the person move out from the room uh, already I mentioned with my example. So, this is another one and here also the furniture because this is movable. You can uh, increase the load, you can move this furniture to the other room. So, these are live load. Now, uh, if you see that uh, picture number 3, so what exactly it is? It is distributed load. Distributed load means when you apply a load to a structure, say for example, this is your beam and column. So, or uh, someone is standing here. So, basically in order, so at the corner you will have uh, less load than this particular corner. So, it will form something like this. It is distributed, but random not uniform, but there are cases where it will be done uh, with uniform. So, also uh, we uh, call it in technical term UDL uniformly distributed load. So, UDL uniformly distributed load. So, picture 4 is all about where uh, the load is distributed uniformly. Now, con in contrast to that sometimes it may be a point load. Point load is something like you have this surface okay, and somewhere you just put some load. Okay. So, that is basically point load. So, here if you see that uh, these two columns they are carrying the load of the beam and there may be another wall or something which is a point load to that. Though it will be distributed, but this particular configuration is uh, called point load. Now, move to the uh, image number or uh, the scheme uh, sketch number 6. Again, it is UDL, but partially. This particular um, you know arrangement is called continuous uh, beam structure, where it is continuing over 3 columns, but load is being given here. So, for that there is a bending and to counter it. So, there is another type of upward type build, uh, bending to this structure. So, this is partial. When you put it uh, continuous or full, so nature will change. So, we will also discuss it when we talk about this you know uh, beam column structures in detail. Now, move to this one. What exactly the picture number 8? It is the static load why it is called static uh, like uh, here I said that it can be moved and all. So, movable immovable that is a live and dead load, but here it is static because the moment uh, that person lifted the weight. So, that will be recorded. So, in lifting competition at certain uh, you know category when uh, the load is recorded. So, that is a static one it will not change that will be recorded. So, this load is there. Now, already I have shown with the, this car hitting this particular wall. So, it is impact load and then dynamic load this was the building initially and with some lateral wind pressure. So, it will bend like this, it will sway like this. So, this is your dynamic load. Uh, this is a better representation. So, now if we uh, if I ask you this thing. Uh, like what is date load? So, basically the answer is very simple that all the material all that structural component load okay, of a building is referred as date load. Whereas, movable uh, object like furniture, human being, machinery these are live load. So, both are important in order to design it. So, when we uh, like uh, design a building based on the requirement we just make the space division and uh, you know create those beautiful 
spaces and then basically in order to make it happen, in order to bring it to reality, so we have to design the structure. So, that moment we have to take all this dead load and live load. So, for kitchen it will be something because in kitchen you know along with a normal furniture and all there will be some permanent furniture. When it is built permanently, even that is in furniture category, but that will be considered as dead load not the live load. So, that we need to understand. Suppose, you construct a slab or a cupboard which is permanent okay, made of some uh, you know concrete or brick. Uh, now, this is another way of looking into this like based on the duration one is permanent and other is temporary. Temporary means uh, it will not be there after certain time. Okay. Uh, so, permanent load basically the self load of the object or part of it and it is basically leading to dead load okay? and temporary load are basically which are movable and all this is basically the live load. Now, in temporary load uh, there are certain way of defining it, one is your imposed load, second is the thermal load and third is dynamic load. So, what is imposed load? Basically, the user defined load. So, it includes uh, everything like from human being to furnitures or all machinery that we use. Thermal load related to, to the heat uh, you know uh, due to change in temperature, what load will uh, be applied to a structural component or building. Dynamic load, load caused by varying external condition. Okay. So, it may be due to rain, it may be due to flood, it may be due to snow, it may be for uh, the wind or maybe it is for the uh, earthquake. So, all this oscillation, vibration that you know creating the load is under this dynamic load. So, let us understand this in further detail, so that we will have a better idea about it. So, this is another image, uh, schematic image where you can see that wall. Uh, then your floor, then floor is transferring uh, load to the beam, beam is transferring to column and finally, it will transfer to the foundation and foundation will transfer load to the soil is anchored with. So, these are permanent load or dead load. Now, what is imposed load? The human being and the furniture. Already I uh, uh, mentioned it. Now, this also uh, you know helpful to clear it in a better way. Now, this is example of permanent load, this is a, a building under construction building here we can see that uh, you know all these uh, you know um, structural element beam columns and other thing which are made of concrete or sometimes after certain time it will be covered with a the brick then uh, other structure any uh, you know structural material which will make this enclosure livable. Uh, so, these are permanent load. So, material load and equipment load. But one thing very interesting to uh, look into this as because it is under construction. So, this is being supported with some you know shuttering or uh, scaffolding or sometime uh, this you know uh, this props which will hold it. So, these are very temporary structure. So, in this image we will only consider this particular um, you know the main structural component beam column not this. These are again temporary structure, this you may um, uh, say equivalent to the furniture. So, once it is uh, get the you know final setting when it is stable enough we will remove this shuttering. Okay. So, this picture those uh, shuttering and props okay, these are not permanent load, permanent load is only the material load okay? or any equipment that is permanently built. Again this is a schematic one the imposed load where we already mentioned that it is the load uh, uh, you know by the people human being or the furnitures and etcetera. So, here you can see this cross section this is one schematic from a lab. So, where uh, this is the sitting area, this is the lab area. So, including all this like even uh, those uh, lab uh, equipments, furnitures, everything will add to the imposed load and they are again 
as we discuss that life load. Imposed load it may be something from the nature. So, again uh, this is already we mentioned that snow load. So, over the period like once uh, it get the temperature it will be melted, but uh, it is some additional load. So, you can see in this building uh, and this thickness may vary if uh, there is a, a, like a continuous uh, activity snowfall over a time. So, it may create a huge load and sometimes uh, you know for that reason when you design this kind of roof. So, uh, there will be some mechanism to you know remove this in periodical manner. So, that uh, it will not really damage the building. Now, come to the thermal load. So, it is basically due to the change in temperature. So, sometimes object will expand, sometimes that will actually you know uh, do the reverse, it will just uh, compact, it will uh, contract uh, uh, in that sense and due to that change in this temperature, there will be some you know development of crack and it will only uh, develop when we use different materials. Because you know uh, in you know school science we have studied the young modulus. So, uh, that is like based on that like if we know that uh, modulus, so it will be different for uh, like a concrete it will be uh, then a steel. So, steel will expand more than concrete and in concrete uh, whether it is plain concrete or RCC. So, RCC means reinforced cement concrete okay, which also uh, you know Mm, which is also having uh, steel as reinforcement. So, whenever we have different kind of materials say for example, here bricks and mortar. So, two different materials they expand uh, differently in different manner their expansion will be different uh, in some uh, you know temperature difference and it will develop crack. So, this is for the brick and this is roof uh, tin based and there is some putty. Uh, which uh, was fixed initially and due to different expansion uh, with uh, you know heat. So, here we see the cracks. So, purpose is uh, not fulfilled here because if it develop cracks, so sometimes it may also uh, be prone to the water leakage and then your building will get damp and all. Now, come to uh, the dynamic load, there are lots of uh, load uh, they are uh, in this category. So, we will discuss one by one. So, settlement load uh, at uh, already I mentioned. So, what exactly it is? So, say for example, your uh, building is here and you have this foundation right. And this area is having some water body and ground water table. So, sometimes this particular land sink little bit down. So, this self weight ok the dead load will try to drip it down. So, for that the building may tilt. So, due to settlement of the soil ok below the structure okay, below the ground may cause some damage. So, that load which actually uh, do the damaging is called settlement load. Then seismic load due to earthquake, wind load due to wind, rain load, flood load, then earth load. Earth load is basically the lateral soil pressure. Okay. Impact load all of a sudden load and resonant load will we create resonance. So, uh, let us see one by one. So, this is the settlement load. So, as I mentioned that if it is uniform settlement, so your building will settle and all building they settle very slowly uh, if the soil is not compact. So, no damage, but when it is a tipping settlement, then building will tilt. But uh, at the same time, if uh, your building is having differential settlement like there is no fixed settlement, so it will crack. So, tipping settlement example is here the linen tower of Pisa. Come to seismic uh, load or earthquake load. So, in earthquake uh, what you can see that uh, it generates uh, below the earth. So, that is called hypocenter and that above point is called epicenter. So, it is a movement of land in both the direction. Okay. So, say for example, 
I have this building, this is uh, you know grounded like this. So, during the earthquake it is the jerk, random jerk with different intensity. So, that will try to move, but the thing is the heavy structure that will have a inertia. So, it will try to you know stay in its original position. So, if you do it, so that will lead to sway and the moment uh, the you know surface showing this direction, this will stay in original position and this will create huge sway at larger height. So, it will be vulnerable for collapse. If you see in this, this is a GIF image. So, by which you can understand that how it collapse, you can observe with this length, this is the earthquake load and it is very dangerous. Recently, we observed in India in 2000, uh, you know, 15 we had uh, experienced it and in the area Taiwan, Japan or in China, Indonesia. So, it is uh, very common in nature. Now, come to the wind load, here actually uh, it is due to the wind. Okay? So, uh, wind will create uh, some thrust on this wall and then at the back yet it will create suction. So, this is called positive negative. So, that will also create the sway of the building and actually the velocity of wind if this is your height and this is your velocity of the wind. So, it will increase if your height increases and there are some basic forms which will actually you know minimize the wind load on this. If your surface is having larger area, complicated area, so that will create more problem due to the wind pressure. So, we should design in that manner, but for high rise building wind load is very vital along with all other self load and uh, other life load. So, this is one example of uh, like wind load and that uh, actually collapsed that Takuma narrow bridge in 1940. So, what happened exactly? When you have uh, this particular bridge uh, over uh, you know span where wind is predominant, so it will create pressure. So, it will actually make it twisted and it will create a vibration. So, definitely it will be a periodic vibration until it uh, collapsed. So, for that it is very vital and that is why for uh, those bridge construction, okay, normally we give some counter weight. Say for example, in Howrah bridge and all heavy counter weight is given to protect against the wind load. So, this is also important, this is one example from the bridge category, but that has effect for the high rise building. So, we should know this. So, this is due to wind. Come to the rain load, again accumulated rain will add extra load to the supporting structure and this may collapse. So, here uh, a fall ceiling or something, it was some damage due to rain, you can see uh, the water here and all. So, that should be also taken into consideration. The flood load is hydrostatic load, again it will create pressure. So, in on the direction of flow that will also create the drag effects from the site and that will create negative pressure or suction at the back. So, that will also create some uh, problem to the building and uh, if your building material is weak or uh, that particular pressure and it also depends on the uh, volume of the road uh, flood. Uh, so, this volume of the uh, flood or the height of this particular level will also affect the uh, you know damage. So, let us see the next uh, jeep image. So, you can see that uh, due to flood what is the situation, the building is totally collapsed and recently in India Uttarakhand we have also experienced similar kind of thing due to the heavy uh, unprecedented rain and flood the situation many building collapsed. This is the earth load, so basically lateral forces resulting from soil or earth pressure that may sometime damage it. So, you can see this is a, a retaining wall or the boundary wall and this art is actually you know creating pressure to this and it is not in a safe condition. So, sometimes it uh, is also very vital to know. So, this is art load. Impact load already I have given the explanation that nailing a uh, uh, you know nailing with a hammer or maybe a car uh, just you know 
hit a building all of a sudden that create the impact. So, it is also sometimes important. So, if your building is vulnerable to this kind of uh, thing, so you have to take into consideration. And uh, if your structure is weak, sometimes you know putting a nail also damage your building. It will also create uh, you know uh, disturb the uh, equilibrium of your structure. Now, this one is the uh, last one where it is called resonant load. So, what is resonance? When you a wave generates okay, and over the period, okay, it will actually propagate. So, it will create resonance and sometimes uh, you know uh, we experience uh, this uh, with uh, this Mexican wave uh, for a you know very uh, uh, two great team are playing football or cricket. So, in the stadium, so people they are creating in a rhythmic manner. So, when that wave created wave and the supporting structure, okay, the vibration is accumulating, they are actually synchronizing each other. So, that will propagate the wave and that may create the resonance, so which may collapse. So, this is another example where it was your control demolition and uh, it was uh, collapsed due to the resonant frequency of the wave. So, uh, helping uh, taking that as advantage that was a control demolition. So, that uh, the this particular demolition will not affect the surrounding area. So, here uh, uh, we actually summarize everything. So, what we learn? So, basically two type of load, dead load and live load. So, what is dead load? This is basically the cell point of the structure and non movable weight. And live load is actually movable weight. Example, like people, furniture and other. Then also we have uh, discussed it in terms of permanent and temporary. So, what is permanent basically refer to dead load and temporary which is uh, which will be varying with time. So, it has first the imposed load. Okay, user load and furniture load and then we also discuss the thermal which will not be a constant uh, expansion contraction over the years. So, in certain season it will expand sometimes it will contract. So, based on that uh, this is taken into consideration and then you have this you know dynamic load under dynamic load. So, the load caused by earthquake. Okay the uh, motion um, on the ground which create the you know disturb the equi uh, equilibrium of the structure and your building starts showing and when it is beyond that particular resistance it will collapse. Then it may be due to flood, it may be uh, your rain, unprecedented rain and causing to flood. Okay. Then wind is very vital especially for the building we construct near the coastal area where wind pressure is really uh, considerably high or maybe the high rise. And in wind and for earthquake both the cases uh, the problem is with the high rise. So, the moment you go up, so wind velocity will be more that we discussed. And apart from that we also discussed the impact load. So, all of a sudden you just uh, you know throw a heavy bag on the floor or something some equipment you just throw it out. So, that will create some impact on the floor or the wall and then also we discuss with the resonant load and which actually you know also very vital when we have such gathering. So, a music when it synchronize the waves multiple waves they synchronize each other and propagate and create huge load on the structure. So, all this load uh, that we discussed today it actually it will help us to design like we have to consider all the loads which are pertinent to that particular type of building and in order to make your structure uh, resistant enough 
to tackle all this gloat, all these factors, we will discuss in uh, the course, in some, some of the module we will discuss it. Uh, so, in order to make your structure earthquake resistant, what type of structure is uh, good and all. And the challenge is to make this uh, resistance stable from this particular, uh, you know, all these uh, loads along with, uh, you know, without compromising any uh, purpose that, uh, that is for that building was designed. So, with this, uh, I just uh, conclude this particular lecture and these are the books already I mentioned in earlier lecture. So, you can go through it to get more information about all this info, uh, all this we discussed and uh, we will uh, in the next lecture we will discuss the synthesis of architecture and structural form uh, which will be another interesting topic to know about and um, thank you for the day.